The delegitimization of ISIS can only be done by Muslims. Obama can't do it, Cameron can't do it, Merkel can't do it. It has to be people that are Muslim, that understand Islam. The dilemma that facing Islam as a faith today is not the rising of the extremists, is the silence of the moderate Muslims. Wahhabi Islam, ISIS's Islam, takes 7th century Islamic interpretations and says that they are going to literally apply it to today. Dr. Zudi Jasser served 11 years as a medical officer in the U.S. Navy and was an attending physician to the U.S. Congress. He's a practicing Muslim and author of A Battle for the Soul of Islam. After the 9-11 attacks, Dr. Jasser was disappointed with the Muslim-American response and founded AIFD, the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. This is not our Islam. We believe we need reform to get to the 21st century within our theological discourse. I see uh, many Muslims being attracted to this idea of the Islamic State. The only thing that inoculated me against radicalization is my love for America, my love for liberty. The bottom line is, is the Muslim world is dominated by theocrats, thugs and dictators, what I call the Islamist Mafia. And we can only defeat them if we start to take back the mantle of Islam. The idea of the Islamic State is just a bad idea. Born in Bombay, India, to a very conservative Muslim family, Asra Nomadi came to the United States at the age of four and grew up in Morgantown, West Virginia. It's a bad idea for the 21st century. It's a bad idea for Christians and Jews and Muslims who do not want to live according to the strict interpretation of Islam, and it's a bad idea for women. Asra's goal of changing the hardline interpretation of Islam became a very personal one after the attacks on 9-11. I was a reporter for the Wall Street Journal on book leave. I went to Pakistan. There, my colleague from the Wall Street Journal, Danny Pearl, came to visit me. He went off for an interview from which he was then kidnapped and murdered by men who practice this interpretation of Islam that is very much the ideology of the Islamic State today. And what I realized very personally is that it's my duty as a Muslim, it's my duty to stand up against the ideology of extremism. Today, she is a member of the Muslim Reform Movement, started by Dr. Zudi Jasser. The Muslim Reform Movement was started in December 2015. A group of us as Muslims stood together with this declaration. And what we are trying to do is be the change we want to see in the world. What we assert here is an uh, idea of Islam in which we believe in peace, human rights, and secular governance. So many of us who have been doing similar work, uh, I called them, sent them notes, and said, listen, let's have a summit of all of us who really get this and want to take ownership for it and we can make a two-page declaration that is a firewall that clearly delineates for not only ourselves and Muslims but for all of the West how do you tell who are the Islamists that are working against us versus who are the reformers and the classical liberals if you will that are working with us December 4th two days after the attacks at San Bernardino the newly formed members of the Muslim Reform Movement held a press conference at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. We have seen Islam become a regressive interpretation because of so many of the sexist, intolerant, and even violent interpretations that the Saudi government has exported over the last four decades. Following the press conference, Asra Nomani and the rest of the group took their declaration to the Saudi Finance Islamic Center of Washington. One of our brave souls in the Muslim Reform Movement went like a stealth fighter across the courtyard to the front door of this mosque. And he taped to the front door of the mosque our declaration for the Muslim Reform Movement. Quickly enough, a staffer from the Islamic Center of Washington ripped down the declaration 
but we had made our statement. We stand against violent jihad. We stand against the idea of the Islamic State, not only ISIS, but all Islamic State. We stand against the caliphate. We stand for the equality of men and women. We stand for free speech. We believe ideas don't have rights. Human beings do. So what we have to fundamentally do is challenge those governments of Qatar, of Saudi Arabia, of Iran, of Pakistan. And we have to say, these ideas are not okay anymore for the 21st century, and that's, that's what we're doing. And can I tell you what's happening is we are hearing from Muslims, and they are saying thank you to us. They are saying thank you for standing up with courage because we fear challenging the status quo, and we are so grateful to you for being our voices in the world. There's more war stories fighting ISIS just ahead. The men and women who serve in the U.S. military make it the greatest fighting force in the world. No doubt. Look, it's also clear that radical Islamist ideology, like that spread by ISIS and other terror groups, are a major threat to the United States and other Western nations. The question is this, will ending the menace boots on the ground? And if so, whose troops will fill those boots? Well, the war against ISIS isn't going to be won on a battlefield alone. We also have to defeat that ideology and allow no sanctuary for terrorists anywhere. More has to be done to protect our homeland. I'm Leif Babbitt. And I'm Oliver North. The fight against ISIS is a war story that deserves to be told. Good night.